And uh, the lawyers for the plaintiffs simply outgunned the lawyers for the state and managed to get the, plaint the witnesses for the uh, defense to say some quite embarrassing things on the stand in addition to calling young earth creationism rubbish. Um, one of the um, theologians called by the defense um, did not impress the judge very much when he replied that he believed that UFOs were the result of Satan. And of course, when the uh, judge issued his decision, the creation law was struck down, and people on our side of the issue were quite happy. Judge Overton ruled in McLean versus Arkansas that the methodology employed by creationists is a factor which is indicative that their work is not science. A scientific theory must be tentative and always subject to revision or abandonment in light of facts that are inconsistent with or falsify the theory. Judge Overton got it right. That is one of the more important aspects of science. And of course, creation science, or any kind of creationist, or any really ideological effort to um, do science from the perspective of X, Y, or Z, is likely to fail. Um, you have to be willing to um, sit down before fact as a little child, as Huxley once said. Well, the McLean decision, the McLean trial, was such a thorough rout of creation science that the state never appealed. So McLean never became a wide precedent for um, the illegality of t And Don Aguilard, a science teacher in Louisiana, and other plaintiffs brought suit against the government. And the Supreme Court eventually heard arguments, well, yeah, heard oral arguments in the case Edwards versus Aguilar. And we were very happy with the results of Edwards because Edwards declared that the Creation Science Act impermissibly endorses religion by advancing the religious belief that a supernatural being created humankind. And so we were pretty happy about creation science. It really got the wind knocked out of its sails on a national level with Edwards versus Aguilard in 1987. Uh, there was a bit of a lag, and certainly in the late 80s and early 90s, and actually even today at NCSC, we do occasionally get um, school boards uh, or legislation cropping up uh, wanting to present creation science. And whenever we get a call from a school district like that, we just tell the school board member, the parent, or the teacher, well, why don't you ask your legal retainer what he thinks about this? And very, very quickly, those, those laws disappear because any lawyer working for the school district is going to say, no, you can't do that. The Supreme Court has already spoken. Creation science is unconstitutional. That would be crazy to pass a policy uh, requiring the teaching of creation science. So by and large, creation science as a creationist strategy has slipped away as a legal strategy and as an active classroom strategy. Uh, but the... Uh, for several years, there, there were attempts to um, uh, test this, and at least in the first few years after Edwards versus Aguilard, some very interesting cases came up that uh, used Edwards in their reasoning and which even more firmly solidified the argument about the unconstitutionality of creation science. And some of these you may not have heard of, so I thought it might be interesting to, to at least inform you about them. One was a case in, Chicago, in the Chicago area, Webster versus New Lenox, in which a um, middle school, a seventh grade teacher, sued his district for his right, his free speech right, to teach creation science in the public schools. And the district court decision was very firm as was the appeals court, and the court replied that, I'm sorry, I should back this up just a little bit. Remember that Edwards versus Aguilard was a decision about a policy um, top down. The school district, uh, or excuse me, in this case, the state of Louisiana had said, thou shalt teach creation science along with evolution. The Supreme Court said, nada. In the case of Webster, this was an individual teacher who was freelancing, shall we say. Um, there was no policy in New Lenox saying, thou shalt teach creation science, but Mr. Webster just thought this was really great science and he was going to teach it anyhow. And the nice thing about the court decision in Webster versus New Lenox is the court said, you can't freelance. 
an individual teacher who wants to teach creation science is violating the First Amendment just as much as if there were a policy at the school district level. So that was a very useful thing. A similar case that I think is particularly interesting to the people in this audience is a California case, Pelosa versus Capistrano. And yes, it is that Capistrano to which the swallows return. Um, in the decision that the judge uh, issued, which was a, I'm sorry, Pelosa, similar to Webster, was arguing for his free speech and actually freedom of religion right, which was kind of an odd approach to teach creationism along with evolution. The judge wrote, it is plaintiff's position, it's Mr. Pelosa's position, that forcing him to teach the religious belief system of evolutionism as a valid scientific theory would force Pelosa to become an unwilling agent of the school district in the establishment of the religion of secular humanism in violation of the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. This was a don't make me teach evolution case which was a little odd. Um, the judge was kind of testy in his reply. Charitably read, Pelosa's complaint at most makes this claim. The school district's actions requiring him to teach evolution establish a state-supported religion of evolutionism, or more generally, of secular humanism. We reject this claim because neither the Supreme Court nor this circuit has ever held that evolutionism or secular humanism are religions for Establishment Clause purposes. This is a good thing. The Supreme Court has held unequivocally that while the belief in a divine creator of the universe is a religious belief, the scientific theory that higher forms of life evolve from lower ones is not. This is a useful case to keep in mind if you are uh, talking about church and state separation. So the Pelosa case, in summary, says that evolution is a scientific theory. Oh, good. Um, Evolution is not a religious belief. That's really good. Secular humanism is not a religious belief for legal purposes. And that a district can require teachers to teach evolution as a valid scientific theory. In fact, there have been a number of other cases that I won't bother you with in which the courts have decided that if a district tells a teacher to teach X and Y and the teacher says, no, I only want to teach X, the district can discipline that teacher for not teaching Y. If a teacher is told to teach X and the teacher wants to teach Y instead, the district can say, no, stick to the curriculum. A K-12 teacher has very little academic freedom. This is the way the law works. Whether you like it or not, this is the way it is. Um, it's not like the university level. And in every case where a teacher has argued for his academic freedom to teach creationism or some other idea that's outside of the um, curriculum and the school district that says, no, we don't want you to teach that, the courts have supported the district. A case that is particularly important to me in my line of work, especially these days, is a Minnesota state court where a teacher named Rodley Levake, Levake brought suit against his district because his district told him he cannot teach the evidence against evolution. He wanted to teach evolution, which was in the curriculum. But he also wanted to teach the strengths and weaknesses of evolution, which is something I'll talk more about in a little bit, because that is the current strategy. And his district said, no, we just want you to teach evolution the normal way, like they teach it in college. And so he sued for his right to teach evolution the way that he wanted to. And in Levesque versus Independent School District number 656, the Minnesota Supreme Court said, plaintiff asserts a free speech right to teach the criticisms of evolution in the biology classroom. Plaintiff's position is wrong. <laughs> Fairly straightforward. But you know, 